Okay, so now we're um, ready to install the skip plate and Mark is gonna walk you through the steps of this. Is it a specially prepared skip plate for you, Mark? Uh, yep, all the workers that were involved in either developing this or actually physically making it, mm -hmm. sign it off. No, you can't have one of these because you have Because <laughs> this is... 100% Hungarian pride. Well, there we go. Perfect. Sure um, is. So the install process for the skid plate is relatively straightforward. You'll notice that you have two different size uh, main brackets. You will need to put the bracket in place. Sorry for the noise. But we also have to make sure to explain that the, the narrower piece goes on the back. This is kind of self-explanatory because this is wider on the top than this, right? Yeah. Because on the crash bars, you can almost see when you when I line it up, the rear tab on the crash bar sticks out farther, farther. than the one up front. And also this this is the matching brace because this is wider as well yeah. than the front. And right, we, so the narrow one goes You the, can't you can't mix them up. And they've just pointed this out to me in the factory. Mm -hmm. The holes are specifically cut. So you wouldn't be able to mount it. They're different. That's right. So you, yeah. even if you try... So this is another way to make sure, right? Yeah. There are different ways to make sure, and this is one of them. It's good you to know... You would be tempted both. to put it on this way, but it wouldn't line up, yeah, so we, you have to put it on both angles. Because it's not, a, not an exact triangle. This is offset. Yeah. So you can move it around a little bit. Just like the corresponding holes down here. Okay, so, so what are we doing next? You're going to run all these little guys. I will give you a, a little platform oh, yeah. to place this on. Look at that. It's got multi-purposes, this little stand. It's a really nice little stand. So what are we putting in here? We're, um, we have countersunk um, Allen bolts. Yeah. Are the holes are countersunk? There are four. Four, um, four millimeter Allen heads countersunk. But the, yeah, uh, this is uh, the the matching tool is a four millimeter Allen key. This is a six millimeter diameter Allen bolt. So about six by sixteen or twenty six by twenty, I believe. Yep. And they you just run through. And you just put it on. You're just gonna keep going all the way around. Leave them loose for now until you get them all lined up um, and then torque them down. Uh, the reason you're doing it on a stand is because you would not be able to do this while it's on the bike because all of these are up next to yep. the header. Okay, so Mark is gonna deal with this and then we're gonna come right back in just a few minutes. Yep. Mark and I have been just talking while he's uh, putting on the Mark. brace and he's got a pretty good point. We're talking about leaving a hole in here, cut it out, so make the oil um, oil draining process easier. But, Mark? Yeah, there's, there's, I get quite a few calls in the shop from different people, um, and one of the biggest questions is about a drain plug hole. Um, it, it's kind of like the tire and oil conversation to some degree. Uh, but in our position, and my position working with Outback Motor Tech is, um, drop your skid plate off. Um, it's four bolts or eight bolts to get off drops on the ground um, This obviously lets you get to the drain plug, but the other side of it is inspect what's under your skid plate Because what happened to you? Yeah, I, last time I did my oil change I dropped it off and I had like an acorn sized rock that I'd gotten up underneath the skid plate So that acorn sized rock is now sitting on the pan up against your engine And if you were to take a good hit, it could crack the case from the other side Or it could even get jammed somewhere in between here Yep Right, and what you can also wear a hole in something. Yeah. You know, exhaust systems are pretty tough, but they're also fragile in the sense of something rubbing on it. So, the so argument, it's technically it's more than just an oil change. It's a big, it's a full service. It's an inspection. Yeah, you pull it off, hose off underneath, make sure you got nothing growing under there. Because there could be there are little crevices, tight little spots, and rocks can get jammed in. You don't need to polish it. I just take yeah. a, I just take a long bristle brush. Dip it in oil and water and just run it back and forth across real quick. That's just, just to preserve your beautiful beam, right? That's it. Okay, so how are we doing here? 
Uh, aside from torquing these down, we'll be what, are, what tools are we using this for? Uh, this is a four millimeter Allen key. We're actually you can use an Allen key. Yeah. Uh, you can use an Allen key, or you can use a four, the right one. four millimeter Allen socket. Right. You have the options, and also a ten millimeter wrench, or they call it spanner. Uh, spanner is down under me. In Australia, spanner. And England. <laughs> yeah. Joke aside, this okay. is the tool you're using. So ten millimeter on the nut side, and a four millimeter Allen key on the the opposite side. And. A good point is, this tool is actually really too big to be doing this. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm a gentle mechanic. Yeah. Um, you could easily strip it out yes. just with a little pressure. So, it's, so I'm holding way up yeah. at the top, not down at the handle. And it's just a snug fit. Um, we are using a nylock nut. And that makes it, uh, you don't really need to use lock, lock tight on this. No. And that just allows you, it's, it's just a few turns. We got this one down machined pretty tight. The head's right in there, it's not sticking out, nice and clean. You can, yeah. And it's not fully tightened yet, so. No. Nope. Okay, no. So, what is next? What's next after uh, putting oh, in the, the braces? The brackets, we're yeah. about to skip right to the brackets that are underneath the crash bars. Okay. So, one point about what we did with our design um, unfortunately, you can't run our skid plate without our crash bars. It's not trying to sell you a skid plate, it's for pure strength. Um, this is all really overbuilt underneath so it'll hold the weight of the bike when you do log crossings and stuff. Um, other skid plates use back bolts for the for the um, center stand and different configurations, but this is what we came up with. So running without a skid plate, that's great, but if you want our skid plate, you're gonna need our crash bars. So the easiest way to do it is, it's not heavy, pull it, pull it with one hand, run the four bolts on this side, we're working on the, we're working on the right hand side or the right side of the bike, we just run these in thin, loose with the fingers, and we're going to run around with the other side of the bike, and we're going to make sure everything's looking nice. You can see that these um, bolt holes are actually slotted, they move up and down a little bit. And that, that enables you to move it around a little bit while you're installing it. Give you a little bit of a free play, if you will. And just while you're watching the video, ignore any loose bolts. I just got bolts loose. Yeah. Um, that's just because we're doing a take care of seat. Quick setup. It's very nice having a lift in your garage. <laughs> There you go, matches up, the two are all lined up, run the bolts through, always using your fingers. Lock tight, everything. And for this one, there's not really any, any super tricks. Um, just because of the way things build, things get heated, they cool off. Um, we just experienced a, just a minor detail and that the distance between the two brackets is slightly small. Um, you could generally just pull it over and hook it up. Um, so if yours fits a little snug, um, that's perfectly fine. That's pretty much it. It's good plates in place. What, what's, the two, what's the tool we're going to use to tighten? Uh, did we mention? Oh yeah, the 5mm uh, Allen key. Yeah, this was a... And that's it. You don't have to do anything. Sorry, up here, 10 millimeter socket. Or... Uh, or we got the, I think it's T30. T30 hex head in there. T uh, Torx or the 10 millimeter hex head. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do anything on the other side because they are not already is uh, welded in. And it's just a preference. Some guys like the T, the hex heads. Other people like the um, or the regular. Cool. So we're gonna tighten it up and we're gonna go outside to have a little walk around video showing the, the setup. And if we have time, we'll do the upper crash bars as well. Beautiful.